Yeah. Uh, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, uh, I I am just about to start in October on LHD, uh, large electrical device in Japan, uh, my, uh, for my PhD studies. And uh, thus, uh, the presentation will be kind of like uh, evolution of uh, me going uh, uh, from tokamaks to stellarators, uh, but uh, I still try to uh, uh, maintain my knowledge about uh, the uh, evolution of uh, equilibrium goals uh, in uh, tokamak uh, devices for tokamak devices. So, uh, without further ado, uh, uh, to the outline, uh, in the beginning, I will uh, run through uh, some MHD interaction uh, for tokamaks and stellarators. Uh, transition to uh, designing a stellarator, uh, mentioning some codes and uh, how does it work. In the third part, I, I would like to uh, go uh, for uh, go for my diploma thesis uh, uh, on uh, Compass Tokamaka and uh, describe uh, why the code over there was uh, quite um, enriching and uh, how uh, how it uh, pushed me towards uh, the fourth part, which is uh, my future PhD at LAG. So uh, the uh, ideal MHD equilibrium uh, st state uh, is uh, achievable for uh, mm, uh, it is an, uh, gives, gives us uh, an equation for which uh, can be further further uh, specific, spe uh, which can be further specified uh, for tokamaks or uh, p uh, pinches or uh, stellarators, uh, basically any plasma. Uh, but uh, for our, our uh, for mm, for our interest, uh, I, most uh, people surely know about the Gatschel-Shafranov equation. Uh, and uh, it is important uh, to note over here that uh, the mm, input for solution of the Gatschel-Shafranov equation to find the equilibrium in Tokamax is the pressure profile and the current profile. Uh, however, uh, also it is uh, important to note that uh, so, uh, such uh, equation grants uh, existence of uh, flux surfaces uh, in the device. Uh, when, the, when we solve the equation, we actually find it and we are guaranteed to find the solution. Uh, however, uh, when we uh, take a look into uh, stellarator MIG uh, uh, and uh, find the equilibrium in stellarators, uh, the uh, wall problem uh, is more complicated. Uh, in Stellarator, uh, in comparison to Tokamaks, uh, we don't have the axisymmetry. However, we have still uh, periodicity uh, and uh, we can uh, apply flipping symmetry. Usually, the description uh, gets more complicated, especially with, uh, and uh, to, to describe uh, the device uh, and uh, the problem, we use cylindrical coordinates and the boundary can be uh, de uh, described as uh, shown in, in the slide. Uh, however, uh, it is important to note that uh, <clears throat> the solution uh, is not always possible to be found. Uh, we cannot uh, always find uh, flux surfaces in uh, in uh, stellarators. So uh, as for uh, the theory, uh, the simplification of helical symmetry uh, allows us uh, by applying helical symmetry in uh, simplification of a straight stellarator, we still can find an optical solution, and uh, this solution still guarantees us. Uh, finding the flux surfaces. However, when we bend the, uh, the, uh, the mm -hmm. when we bend the uh, state accelerator, 
uh, into Linster Accelerator. Oh, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, over here, uh, we can uh, here we have uh, the flux surfaces solution, and uh, now that uh, uh, it is a sum of uh, of modes for which we can combine. In the next slide over here, uh, we can see uh, the visualization of uh, certain first three uh, modes, which in combination gives us uh, the uh, final uh, equilibrium solution. However, uh, if we bend the accelerator into a real accelerator, uh, we obtain uh, we obtain another new term, uh, we obtain new term, uh, which uh, complicates things a lot because uh, it introduces uh, magnetic islands and uh, the flux surfaces are not guaranteed. Uh, also, uh, uh, bending uh, the state accelerator uh, uh, leaves us with a uh, three-dimensional problem uh, and a uh, whole computation of equilibrium is way more complex and uh, therefore uh, numerical solutions are a necessity. Of course, for Tokamax, uh, the numerical solutions are always used as well. However, uh, we can compute for, uh, things uh, uh, analytically uh, to, to uh, a certain degree, and uh, which is not possible for stellarators. Mm. For, uh, for for the numerical solutions of uh, equilibrium stellarators, VMEC and PIs uh, codes are usually used. I will mention them in a second. Uh, uh, so how do we? Uh, why are uh, why is equilibrium so important, and how do we uh, uh, how does it uh, apply for uh, for example designing a accelerator? This part will, will be more about uh, example how how does it apply and why is it so important? Uh, the VMEC uh, code, which uh, stands for Variation Moments Equilibrium Code, uses uh, energy principle by which minimization uh, under specific constraints uh, uh, we can find the equilibrium for stellarators. However, uh, this code has uh, uh, many cons, uh, like uh, the islands are not, in, in, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the islands are not included. Uh, yeah, they, they are excluded, sorry. Uh, and uh, for when, uh, which is, they, they are uh, replaced uh, kind of by divergent parallel currents. Uh, however, uh, if we uh, should find the equilibrium with large islands, it is basically uh, impossible to use. Uh, also, the solution is only an approximation of the equilibrium. However, uh, this code is extremely fast and allows for iterative uh, search for possible uh, design of a new uh, new device. Mm. Its counterpart is uh, PS, Princeton Iterative Equilibrium Solver, which uh, solves MHD equations indirectly by iterative uh, computation and uh, thus, uh, as it uh, takes into account, uh, uh, it, as it uh, solves uh, basically general uh, MHD equations, uh, it allows mag for magnetic uh, islands. However, it is extremely slow. Therefore, a combination of those two uh, codes are, is usually used. Uh, by uh, I will explain uh, in the next slide how is it used. So when we want to des uh, design a new uh, stellarator device, uh, for this is uh, for example how it went for Wendelstein 7X. Uh, the equilibrium is designed by defining uh, co 
confinement quality uh, parameter Q, and it includes uh, various uh, aspects. Uh, and basically, uh, what uh, what it was so special about uh, the Nullstein Seven X is that uh, it uh, applied uh, several more criteria for the confinement quality Q, especially uh, for the neoclassical transfer. Uh, and uh, thus, uh, how, how do we proceed when we uh, design a new accelerator? Uh, at first, uh, it's kind of uh, mm, the other way than with the Comox. In accelerators, uh, as uh, the machine is built uh, for a specific uh, operation, a uh, very specific operation, uh, and cannot be changed afterwards, the, we first specify the flux surface in terms of Fourier coefficients. So we basically uh, say, okay, we want this equilibrium, and uh, is it possible? What, uh, what uh, operational parameters uh, will we have, and so on? And afterwards, we design the coil system. Basically, uh, if, uh, so as first uh, we uh, need to find uh, the flux surface in terms of Fourier co coefficients. Then we apply the VMEC to quickly calculate uh, if we can even find the equilibrium uh, for, for such flux surfaces. And then we uh, evaluate the, uh, the quality coefficient. Does it uh, like, uh, is the neoclassical transfer uh, small enough, and so on. And uh, if we are, uh, we iterate through this loop by using the fast VNIC code, and if we are uh, uh, happy, uh, if we are, uh, if uh, the solution is sufficient, then we verify the uh, final optimized uh, stellar equilibrium by the PS code, which uh, takes a lot of time. However, uh, it uh, also provides uh, some more information about the equilibrium. Uh, it, its precision is way higher. And when we finally uh, achieve uh, our uh, equilibrium, we uh, decide uh, how do we want to uh, <clears throat> run the device then we can finally calculate the closed system, which also is not guaranteed uh, to exist. Ex actually, it is because uh, like the Q uh, parameter includes uh, the uh, ability to uh, construct a closed system for such, uh, for, for such uh, equilibrium. Ah, about my... Uh, the Comac equilibrium com uh, uh, so, uh, <laughs> computation. So for my uh, diploma thesis, uh, I would like to uh, say a few words about the ITM effort, which is probably the most uh, important knowledge for uh, everybody who is listening at the moment. Uh, the the ITM stands for Integrated Dynamic Modeling. Uh, later, uh, it was uh, renamed into ITM Task Force, and uh, the goal is to uh, simulate the role of the Dynamic Discharge, uh, which uh, is quite complex, uh, quite complex task. Uh, <clears throat> However, uh, the approach, uh, the ITM uh, is basically, uh, I would say, a government, a go governing uh, program which uh, binds together and uh, uh, various modules, uh, which each uh, focus uh, specific parts uh, of the discharge. And uh, the, IT, the ITM uh, uh, governing program uh, also takes care of uh, data exchange be between the modules. In such a way, uh, uh, simultaneous uh, development of all uh, various codes uh, is, is possible, and also uh, replacement of certain modules by others. 
uh, recently developed. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, what what was I doing uh, for my diploma thesis? Uh, well, uh, uh, I was using a, a code called Phoebe, uh, which uh, actually introduced me uh, quite fast into uh, in, into what I uh, had what I had to learn uh, sooner or later for uh, equilibrium computation and uh, that's uh, actually uh, that the whole equilibrium uh, problem is all about band it's all one big uh, boundary problem uh, in the fixed boundary uh, problem uh, we have uh, we we have some mm, uh, we have last uh, flux surface and we as an input, and we compute uh, the uh, flux surface so uh, within uh, within the region. Uh, it is possible because uh, for, uh, the Gadget-Renov kind of equation is uh, can be it, we can find a green function uh, for for the. Uh, uh, <clears throat> We can find the gain function for the gadget kind of equation, and we can recalculate it on a predefined grid. Uh, you, you see uh, on the figure uh, that uh, the grid needs uh, is quite fine in the case of Phoebe. Uh, it's a grid of triangles. Uh, for as simplex, it's uh, well. I sh I, I want to uh, get into uh, deep in into uh, numerical. Uh, Methods, uh, but uh, mm, on such a gate, we can uh, pre-calculate uh, the gain function, and uh, we can calculate very fast uh, the the solution for the fixed boundary problem. Uh, However, uh, the free boundary problem, in, as, a, as it's quantified, uh, does not have the boundary fixed. And oh, it's not like a separate problem. It's, um, I would say, more like extension of the problem uh, because the free boundary uh, does, uh, says, OK, uh, we don't uh, want a fixed boundary because we want to see some evolution of the plasma column during the discharge. So uh, the, the freebie uh, code uh, introduces a, a actually a, a loop uh, in which uh, the, uh, now you, you should take a look uh, on the right part uh, of, of the uh, scheme uh, where the fixed boundary uh, solver actually uh, iterates to find the fixed boundary so, uh, equilibrium solution. However, uh, this is coupled with uh, oh, th this is extended by uh, two possibilities uh, of uh, loosening uh, the boundary, I would say. Uh, and one is actual that we actually have the plasma shape, and then we are uh, looking for optimization of uh, in, in means of uh, currents. Uh, uh, in other parts of the device, uh, specifically poloidal coils, which uh, shape uh, our equilibrium uh, solution. Uh, the other, uh, and uh, thus uh, the loop continues uh, until we uh, find uh, mm, mm, the currents uh, that uh, are, uh, that uh, comply with our restrictions, for example, material restrictions of the coils and uh, it iterates uh, until we achieve a global convergence for wh when we try to minimize uh, uh, current load on uh, all all mentioned uh, all mentioned coils uh, the other possibility is uh, to actually input the voltages or currents and uh, in such way, we vary uh, the initial uh, 
initial equilibrium fixed fixed boundary uh, solution, and uh, try to uh, uh, and to we uh, actually change the equilibrium uh, the boundary to achieve uh, to to find uh, the real uh, equilibrium that uh, complies with the currents and voltages in the curves. So uh, my uh, my diploma thesis uh, started exactly as I described. Uh, we had uh, the description of future uh, compass uh, compass upgrade to come up, uh, provided by uh, Martin Imrisek uh, from the Fiesta code. And by using the inverse mode uh, and varying uh, things like uh, profiles of currents and uh, of current and pressure in the plasma column, uh, uh, I first had to verify uh, to uh, the mm. verify the design if uh, the design is actually uh, capable of uh, achieving equilibrium for uh, circular elliptical and d-shaped plasma and uh, when uh, such uh, when it was finished uh, also uh, in this part uh, i was verifying the uh, material limits as i mentioned and uh, when i achieved uh, the uh, real uh, the real uh, plasma shape uh, uh, i was able to simulate a uh, vertical displacement even by uh, turning uh, Taking uh, the uh, results of the index mode uh, as initial state, uh, I was able to uh, uh, and uh, yeah, and actually uh, uh, using uh, more uh, more parts uh, of the uh, of the ITM uh, more modules, uh, I was able to simulate the the evolution of the discharge uh, when uh, I turned off uh, the power supplies, it uh, naturally simulates uh, the vertical displacement event. By, uh, and uh, uh, thus, uh, when uh, we take a look into uh, characteristic uh, displacement event time, we can uh, set a uh, um, requirement for uh, the vertical, uh, for the vertical st stability feedback coils and uh, like uh, how fast does it need to run. Uh, this is all uh, the evolution uh, part is uh, possible because uh, if we uh, in the middle in the core of the ITM program is always uh, equilibrium solver and transport solver. Uh, the equilibrium uh, takes, uh, is uh, basically a fixed uh, equilibrium part However, the uh, and uh, coupled with the transport uh, solver, uh, which provides the time step, we are able to uh, calculate uh, stat static equilibria for all these times. Thus, we calculate the evolution uh, of the equilibrium as a quasi-static problem, uh, quasi-static uh, evolution of uh, uh, individual equilibria. So the results are really fast, uh, just uh, like this. Uh, it, uh, uh, it was simulated for 10 milliseconds, and, uh, uh, and uh, we actually confirmed uh, uh, the, that the circular plasma it does not uh, 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 undergo uh, a vertical displacement event, which is expected. And uh, we could find the evolu uh, evolution uh, times uh, for uh, the D-shaped plasma and elliptical plasma, and uh, thus set uh, the uh, constraint for for the uh, feedback loop for uh, vertical stabilization. Uh, as for my PhD at uh, the LHD now. Uh, I don't know if you want to hear more about it or uh, how are we with time? Uh, Rabin? Yeah, yeah, I think for me it's fine. You can uh, you can say a few words about the topic. I think it's interesting for most of us. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can go, Martin. Thanks. Uh, well, uh, the numerical uh, methods, uh, well, uh, as you could see uh, in, already in the uh, theory uh, program, uh, the, hmm, there are uh, all, all sorts of uh, numerical uh, uh, methods that are, are uh, that take place. So, uh, for example, the uh, mentioned uh, finite element uh, method, uh, as well as uh, the regularization for for the currents in the coils. Uh, however, uh, if we take a look at uh, uh, on uh, other methods, uh, there are, uh, uh, there are various ways to uh, describe uh, the current uh, within within the plasma column, which is the, uh, one of the inputs for the catch-up equation, and that's a quite uh, important parameter uh, and to solve the the world uh, problem numerically. We can divide uh, the current into filaments. We can use the finite element description, as mentioned before. Uh, however, those are uh, easy to do in 2D, but in 3D, it's not as easy. Thus, uh, the last bar, uh, the last uh, mentioned uh, uh, method over here, the control surface, uh, is utilized for usually for uh, for 3D uh, simulations. Mm. After uh, it, it, uh, it started at uh, the JT60, actually, the Tokamak, uh, where they were trying to uh, calculate uh, the equilibrium uh, with, uh, with uh, various approaches. And they uh, developed a Cauchy condition surface uh, method, uh, which uh, places uh, a control surface within uh, the plasma column. And uh, the surface uh, is a Cauchy condition uh, uh, surface, uh, meaning uh, it, uh, uh, we actually need uh, Cauchy conditions on the surface uh, in, at the beginning of the simulation. However, uh, uh, that's still that was still in the beginning uh, just a 2D code, just a Cauchy condition surface. Uh, and uh, for my thesis, uh, uh, before my thesis, uh, say before my thesis, the uh, development of a Cauchy condition surface in 3D uh, took place at LHD. Uh, so uh, the <clears throat> the Cauchy condition surface in 3D. Actually, uh, well, they tried uh, various uh, approaches, and uh, in the end, they realized that uh, the precision of the uh, last coast magnetic surface is uh, quite dependent on the shape of the control surface. Uh, uh, we can see uh, that uh, in the beginning the codes are uh, computed with uh, uh, with the straight uh, total uh, Cauchy condition surface, uh, but uh, after application uh, of uh, twisted Cauchy condition surfaces, uh, it is the equilibrium in stellarator can be expected to take some take some shape. We can assume that the Cauchy condition surface can be twisted as well. And uh, oh, oh, sorry, that's <clears throat> that's uh, uh, in the wrong order over here. First, sorry. Uh, actually, we can see that uh, the reduction. We can see the reduction of the error. Uh, by using the twisted Cauchy condition surface. Uh, this whole uh, method was tested uh, for a synthetic, uh, synthetic sen sensor signals, uh, but uh, as we have a 3D, system, 3D, uh, 3D problem, uh, there was like uh, 1,400 uh, sensors, which is, uh, of course, impossible for uh, a real uh, device. 
or like are very demanding for for instance uh, everything so uh we can apply actually a lot of uh, symmetries from stellarators uh yeah it's not axisymmetry but uh, at lhd we have tenfold symmetry so we can reduce uh 10 times uh the uh by uh assuming uh, the periodicity uh, also we can uh, apply like up down symmetry and uh, many more and in the end uh, we can actually uh, reduce uh, to 12 boundary points uh, at which we uh, which correspond to about 150 sensors uh, however uh, mm, we can uh, also apply different type of uh, sensors and uh, by applying uh, flux loops in combination with uh, 58 uh, 3d sensors uh, we are now to a realistic uh, experimental number of sensors uh, so oh sorry so uh, actually uh, so that, that's basically like uh, the work prior to my PhD and what is my PhD about is uh, to <clears throat> to apply uh, the method and uh, to experimental data uh, and fine tune it for uh, the LAD because so far it was the designed kind, uh, kind of uh, gener as a general method. I can uh, still uh, Made a lot, make a lot of uh, improvements for the LHD. That's for the first year. In the second year, uh, I should apply the method for the Wendelstein 7x, and uh, of course compare the results uh, with uh, other um, other methods that uh, uh, other equilibrium solvers. Uh, or uh, uh, usually it's. Uh, uh, in uh, stellarators, uh, I, I compare to uh, what was seen before to Poincaré plots, and uh, and oh yeah, uh, in the third year of my PhD, I uh, hopefully uh, the JT60 super advanced uh, tokamak in Japan, uh, like smaller brother to ITER should be finished and I should be, uh, be able to apply this method because this method is like mm, general 3D uh, equilibrium solver. So it could be applied for uh, the tokamaks uh, which when they use uh, RMPs. So uh, RMPs introduce uh, uh, 3D uh, need into tokamaks and this method can be applied for uh, for this for uh, this usage. Uh, so, in conclusion, uh, there are mm, various approaches. Uh, we can go from uh, energy uh, energy principle, uh, which is equivalent to uh, the to the MHD uh, uh, equations. However, um, mostly uh, we use the uh, MHD equations, uh, especially for tokamaks, as we can uh, derive uh, qu quite uh, uh, quite specific uh, analytical solutions. And uh, uh, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, the world bank is one great boundary problem. Uh, predict predictive codes. Uh, oh, I didn't mention this. Uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, what I uh, uh, what I encountered uh, in my uh, experience so far was uh, the predictive codes uh, for. Uh, but uh, there are uh, like uh, reconstructive codes, uh, which were uh, uh, the predictive codes are, are uh, kind of new, uh, newer, I would say, uh, and uh, they uh, come into replace uh, the uh, re reconstructive codes. However, they are like 
uh, every uh, numeric code needs to be benchmarked. And uh, to verify the function of a new code, you need to uh, compare it to results of, of a verified code which worked before. So they still have their place. And uh, uh, as uh, you could have guessed, when I spoke about uh, the about the ITM effort, it's quite a robust effort, and it um, takes a lot of uh, resources. And uh, reducing uh, and because uh, IDM actually for uh, the computation takes uh, into account a lot of uh, information from all kind of uh, uh, sensors. However, uh, the, uh, the reduction of uh, the number of uh, sensors is surely desired, and uh, the simplification and thus the computation speed uh, is uh, most welcome. Thus, uh, thus the mm. thus uh, my PhD, which uh, actually uh, takes data only for from magnetics, and only from magnetics, magnetics, it's possible to reconstruct uh, the equilibrium in stellar ages. So that's it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, we we are on time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay, thank you very much, yeah. Martin, for thank this you, uh, presentation, especially for waking up so early to, <laughs> to to give this talk quite quite the effort, I would say. Uh, mm. So, if anyone has uh, a question or or wants to discuss something, feel free to, to hit me up or to hit Martin up, and we'll try to uh, find an answer for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I've got a um, small question for Martin. Uh, not sure. more related to the uh, core of the code itself, more related on uh, the inputs of the code. So, um, uh, is there any input that you could um, that could be related with the plasma composition? I mean, so let's see, 48% uh, uh, deuterium, 48% tritium, 4% helium acids, that kind of thing or if it takes into account uh, some impurities that could be in the plasma. Uh, does uh, this uh, VMEC or uh, PIES codes take into account the, the possible plasma compositions in the, in the MHD equilibrium? Well, uh, well, uh, like uh, the equilibrium solutions are, are uh, not exactly uh, mm, uh, for, for this. Uh, I mean, they take input from uh, other modules uh, like the transport server, uh, and etc. Uh, okay. But uh, in in form of uh, like a pressure profile, uh, current profile, and so on, uh, and uh, many other parameters. Uh, uh, however, like uh, the codes itself, uh, I, I don't, at least, uh, I mean, uh, I made my uh, best to uh, understand the, the, uh, the whole codes. Uh, however, uh, they are quite complex. Uh, so I didn't encounter uh, any part that would uh, allow for this uh, in direct way. Mm -hmm. In an indirect way, yes. Mm -hmm. Not in that way. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Perfect. Thank you. That's all for me. Okay. That was uh, the only question that I've got. Okay. I don't know if Katya or Foysal wants to say something or has a question about the content. Mm, uh, I have, I have yeah, no for... question actually. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, well, I wanted to ask something. Maybe I don't know if you touched upon this, but why exactly is like uh, PS so much more computationally expensive than VMEC or yeah, another code? Where's the where's the main difference? Let's say in the in the computational complexity. Oh, uh, the two codes for stellar Yeah. Uh, if uh, if I got a question uh, right. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, basically, uh, 
Oh, the, uh, it's all about uh, the uh, complexity of uh, the equations. Uh, uh, and because uh, the bias code uh, take uh, into account uh, like the whole MHD set uh, and uh, in its uh, quite general form, uh, which uh, uh, in, when we take, uh, when we go iteratively uh, to find the solution, it takes a lot of uh, computational time. However, uh, if we take a look uh, at uh, the VMIC code, uh, well, it uh, it goes from a very simple, uh, uh, very simple equation, which are of course uh, like uh, it's not uh, <laughs> it's not to be solved in minutes. It takes uh, in uh, the order of hours uh, on our. Uh, on, on like uh, so, so, so some clusters and so on, uh, but uh, uh, it it takes a different approach to the solution on the cost of precision. So uh, like uh, it's uh, with uh, most of the codes, if you cut the corners and uh, uh, go for some some solution, but you don't care about uh, the precision, uh, you can uh, reduce uh, significantly the computation time. So uh, one, uh, to answer your uh, question, uh, one part is uh, the uh, different principle, a different uh, set of equations that we compute. And uh, the second is, uh, uh, mm, the code is focused to be fo to be fast, so they so it uh, cuts a little bit around the corners, from what I understand, and uh, thus uh, achieves the fast uh, computation of the equilibrium, just like first shot at the equilibrium and uh, it, to be computed uh, iteratively again and again and again. They are designed like this. Uh, did I did I yeah, answer yeah. your question? Thank you. Thank you for the for the extra information. Yeah. Like, uh, for example, uh, okay, uh, one specific is that the VMAC code uh, replaces all uh, problematic files like the magnetic islands by parallel currents, which uh, like reduces uh, uh, reduces uh, the complexity uh, of the solution, uh, as well as uh, uh, mm, how to put this like. Uh, it actually expects the solution in a form. Uh, it, it actually uh, starts uh, from uh, some solution. Uh, it assumes uh, the existence of the fact surfaces. So it actually uh, starts uh, somewhat uh, it kind of cheaty, like, yeah, we have uh, the fact surfaces. So what is their exact form? However, uh, the bias code doesn't say anything about this. It, it starts from absolutely general solution. Like, uh, it, it doesn't start from a solution, it starts from the equations and uh, like uh, it computes no matter what happens for, for, uh, during the computation. It doesn't follow a certain pattern as the VMAC code. If, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> thank you, Martin. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think we can, yeah, Katja, you want to say something? Yes, or? I have a question. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, hi, Martin. Thank you for the presentation. Um, yeah, I was wondering what's, uh, how fast do you need these predictive uh, codes to be? Like the idea is to use them for while the plasma is burning, so you can kind of predict the instabilities or stuff like that, or it's just after uh, your campaign uh, has happened to know. But uh, yeah, that, that's uh, the important thing. Uh, 
that's exactly uh, kind of the goal of uh, my PhD and uh, the uh, only magnetics uh, solution because it's really fast and uh, it should uh, be able to run alongside the discharge. However, uh, with the idea and task for uh, the um, the solution is uh, the the code is uh, more about uh, limiting the uh, operation space for uh, large devices like ITER or demo. So uh, it reduces uh, what should be examined, uh, what like uh, what operational parameters should be examined because uh, it can say in uh, in advance, okay, this, this uh, doesn't uh, need to be examined because uh, we won't achieve equilibrium at all, or like uh, it, it would be super unstable, or and so on. So uh, because like machines like ITER and the demo are super expensive to run, so it's actually. Uh, cheaper to develop such predictive codes and test the operational space beforehand. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so once again, thank you, Martin. I think uh, we will end the recording here.